The following podcast reviews the process used to determine class and or cohort growth for the Measure B pre-post tests and then the related Component 5 ratings for the measure. The district will provide class or cohort data reports listing the following information for each student. Pre-test quartile, pre-test scale score, typical growth value, post-test scale score target, and the student's actual post-test scale score. The final column, target met, contains a yes or no value, indicating whether or not the student met his or her post-test target. In the case of student one, the post-test score of 15 is equal to or greater than the target of 13, resulting in a response of yes, target met. Student three, on the other hand, had a post-test score that was lower than the target score, resulting in a no in the target met column. The reports are generated by the district and will include all students that tested on each teacher's report. In this case, there were 27 students in the class. It's important to note that the state Measure B assessments are not adaptive in nature and without proper safeguards can penalize teachers whose students start in the highest quartile, in some cases providing typical growth values in excess of the total allowable points. Brandywine is aware of this issue and has built the algorithm used to return a value of yes, target met, if a student starts in the top quartile and ends in the top quartile, regardless of whether or not the target score was met. Since fall goals were based on the percentage of students meeting their growth targets, simply divide the number of students meeting their targets by the number of total students. However, it's important to remember that roster verification must take place prior to calculating the percentage of students meeting their targets. In the example, the teacher has a total of 27 students listed on his report for this class. However, three of these students did not meet the required 85% attendance criteria and are excluded as a result of the roster verification process. So the teacher has a total of 24 students on his verified roster. So he'll use 24 as the dividend. 15 of his students met their average quartile growth targets. 15 students who met their targets divided by 24 students on the verified roster comes out to 62.5% of the students met their growth targets. This teacher's score for Measure B is 63% or 63 points. The actual rating for this measure depends upon the goals that were established during the fall goal setting conference. In this case, the teacher's Measure B score of 63 falls within the 55 to 64 or satisfactory range, just narrowly missing an exceeds rating. Most, if not all, of educators and specialists final component 5 ratings are based on two measures, each weighted at 50%. Overall summative ratings are determined by the individual ratings earned on each of the two measures as seen in the chart. Please note the difference between the two unsatisfactory ratings in red. When one measure is rated as satisfactory and the other is unsatisfactory, the evaluator may, at his or her discretion, apply an upgrade, moving the final overall Comp 5 rating from unsatisfactory to satisfactory. Should such a split rating occur, the evaluator may ask the educator to provide additional evidence for consideration during the upgrade deliberation. When both measures are unsatisfactory, upgrades are not allowable per DOE regulations. 
This concludes the overview on Measure B pre-post-test rating determination.